The Dallas Mavericks have more roster moves incoming. The other day on this channel, we talked about how AJ Lawson was waived by the Dallas Mavericks after the first preseason game, where he really didn't prove that he's changed much. And it was also a move that we kind of saw coming as we were going to make room for Markeith Morris to return to the team. But we do have news that AJ Lawson has found his way back to the Dallas Mavericks roster on a two-way contract, which does fill up that last slot of our three of our two-way contracts that we currently have. And what does that mean for the other players? We'll get into that in this video as well as go over a few injury updates that we currently have. But how's it going, everybody? My name is Marcel Martin. This is Mavericks Digest, bringing you the latest news on everything Mavericks related. And before we get started with today's video, we're currently sitting at 13,569 subscribers. As some of you may know, I've got my own personal goal of hitting 15K before the end of the year, and we're getting very, very close. And if you want to be up to date on everything Mavericks related, the live streams, the watch alongs, the giveaways, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on a single thing that we do. But the Dallas Mavericks, they've got a few roster adjustments to be made. As far as what the main team looks like, that's pretty much set in stone. I mean, our four, at least four of our five starters are set. Obviously, it's Kyrie, Klay Thompson, Luka Doncic, and P.J. Washington. But Jason Kidd did say that that starting center position is still up for grabs between Derek Livey and Daniel Gafford, and maybe even Dwight Powell if he really improves and really shows people that he deserves it. But all jokes aside, it is still between Derek Lively and Daniel Gafford. And in game one of the preseason, Derek Lively looked pretty good, showed that he's ready to take that second year leap as he was showing flashes of Tyson Chandler. But in game two, Daniel Gafford really just showed us, hey, I might be an undersized big. I might not be a Derek Lively, but I'm a Daniel Gafford. I'm still the landlord getting things done on both ends of the court. So it's up in the air of who might actually be our starting center. But in all intents and purposes, it's not that bad whoever does get that starting center position. They're kind of the same player, able to put up the same production. We do have two of the best center rotations in the league as far as what works for the Dallas Mavericks. So it's a good problem to have if you're not sure who you want to start. Where I truly believe that come middle of the season, leading into the playoffs, it will be kind of a case-by-case -case basis on what teams are we up against? How are you feeling? What will work best for the Mavericks on who is actually going to start? I think Derek Lively should continue to start. I think Daniel Gafford is a great backup, but I think Daniel Gafford could also be a pretty good starter. But as we get to the end of the bench, the positions and the roles that the guys have aren't as defined, as well as their tenure on the Dallas Mavericks are still hanging in the balance. And we reported the other day, now, the Dallas Mavericks announced today, which was Monday, that they have waived guard A.J. Lawson. And I know a lot of Mavericks fans were kind of sad about this. A.J. Lawson was a fan favorite to some, some fans in the Mavericks nation. And that, you know, you wanted to see him stay with the team, develop, and just see what he could become for the Dallas Mavericks. Where some people were like, you know, you really didn't show us much during the preseason, during that one preseason game against the Memphis Grizzlies. So if you got cut, that just means that Jason Kidd is looking for the roster that he wants to go into the season with. And each game of these preseason games are like a tryout for these guys. But just the other day, it was reported that the Dallas Mavericks are bringing back forward A.J. Lawson on a two-way NBA contract, sources tell ESPN. Lawson played 42 games for the Mavericks last season and averaged 18.4 points and five rebounds for Dallas Summer League team. And I trust Sham's reporting that he did average 18.4 points and five rebounds. My memory must not be that good. But AJ Lawson, like I said, really didn't impress after that first preseason game. And even after that second preseason game, still didn't really do too much. But we all know that the reason why he was waived and then re-signed was the fact that we wanted to bring Markeith Morris onto the team. As you all know, Markeith Morris did come to Dallas with that trade that we made for Kyrie Irving, so I'm pretty sure Kyrie has some say on what happens with, ha what happens with Markeith Morris, and there's a lot of Mavericks fans who don't think Markeith Morris deserves to be on this roster because he's not going to do anything on the court, and we have enough players on the bench that are going to be locker room guys. But I think Markeith Morris is a good culture player for this team, someone that guys like Luka Doncic looks up to and respects, and that's for any championship team. Those are the type of players you need in your locker room. But with A.J. Lawson now being re-signed on a two-way deal, he fills that third two-way slot. We currently have A.J. Lawson, we have Kessler Edwards, as well as Brandon Williams on three two-way contracts, but that doesn't mean that they're going to be on the team guaranteed once the season starts. Those three players could still be cut, as we have other guys that are still fighting for two-way contracts. We got Jamarian Sharp, who's fighting for a two-way contract. We've got Miller, who's fighting for a two-way contract, and our man, 
Jay-Z and Gortman, the GOAT man himself, who's playing very well in these first two games of the preseason, they're all fighting for a two-way spot. So even though we brought back AJ Lawson, he could still get cut. Brandon Williams, who hasn't played a single game of preseason, in my opinion, most likely will get cut. And Kessler Edwards, he's dealing with the ankle injury. He may stay on the roster. But a lot of people are saying how, you know, Jamarian Sharp being 7'5 is a player that they want to see come back on the Dallas Mavericks. He's 7'5". He's a rim protector. He's a project player for the most part. In these first two games of preseason, he looks very raw. Yes, he can get blocks because he's 7'5". It's not that hard. He can get rebounds. He can... Get to the line, and he, you know he's not the best at free throws, obviously, but he's a project player that a lot of people want to see back on this team in some capacity down the road. Who knows? He could be the next Boban for us. And like I said in my last few videos, Jay-Z and Gortman has just impressed everybody. In game one of preseason, he was electric. He was doing everything. And in game two, although he didn't play as many minutes because we were playing Kyrie and Klay Thompson the first half, we played Daniel Gafford more. But when Jay-Z and Gorman did come in, he looked very natural. He looked like he's been here before. He let the game come to him, playmaking, facilitating. But one thing that I feel like not many people are talking about was his on-ball defense. Every time he was up against Colin Sexton, he was locking him down. It did result in a few fouls, but that just shows that he was playing aggressive and he wasn't allowing his man to just blow right past him. Something that Jane Hardy seems to do often. So with AJ Lawson now back on the team under a two-way contract, fulfilling that third slot, that just makes it that much harder for the other three guys that are fighting for a spot to actually make it to the roster. But like I said, if you're on a two-way spot, you can still get cut. And those other guys, they could easily move in. And in my opinion, I would definitely love to see uh, Jay-Z and Gortman come back. As far as Jamarian Sharp, a lot of people do want to see him. I think it's more of a gimmick that, hey, we have a seven foot five guy we can just throw out there and have no expectations on how well he's going to play. I'm cool if he comes back. If not, that's totally fine. We have bigs that are good. We have Derek Lavi, Daniel Gafford, and as well as Dwight Powell. So I think we're doing pretty good on centers. But at least Jay's being Jay's Jay. Jasmine and Gortman, oh my gosh, he deserves a spot. The GOAT man deserves a spot with the Dallas Mavericks. He deserves a shot. Had a little mental block there. It's late right now. But on top of all the roster changes that we currently have, we do have somewhat of injury updates for a few of our players. Jason Kidd on how Luka Doncic is progressing and if he'll play during the preseason. Saying Luka's feeling great. We'll see. We're running out of games, but we'll see. Says Luka won't play tonight or Monday against LA, but we'll see about next Thursday's finale against the Bucks. So this was out uh, yesterday before the game against the Utah Jazz. No Luka Doncic against the Grizzlies. No Luka Doncic against the Utah Jazz. Maybe against the Clippers. Most likely not. I mean, yeah, no, I'm sorry. He says, yeah, says Luka won't play tonight or Monday against the Clippers. But next Thursday against the Bucks, maybe we'll see Luka Doncic. In my honest opinion, I'm fine if Luka sits out. It's preseason. It, these games don't necessarily matter for us to win. More so to see where is everybody at. And for those end of the bench players, are you going to be on this team? Are you good enough to get a roster spot or not? Luka Doncic playing in these preseason games really doesn't matter. Although I'd love to see what this team looks like altogether. But I can also wait till the season starts. But that's not the only injury update that we have. This next update may not be something that we should be worried about, but it is something that we should at least think about, I guess. But if we look right here, this was after yesterday's game against the Utah Jazz. Uh, Clay Thompson said his back tightened up on him tonight, but he said he'll be ready to go on Monday. Now, Clay Thompson's health is a topic of concern for a lot of Mavericks fans. We know that he missed two seasons in Golden State dealing with his leg injuries. We know he's getting older. He's, I mean, he's not prime Clay. I get all of that. But we do want to monitor what's going on with Clay Thompson. As if we're going to make a deep push in the playoffs, come playoff time, we want to make sure everyone's good. So if Clay Thompson has tightening in his back, okay, we'll play you limited minutes. And that's why we have other players that can take your spot, like Najee Marshall, who's been playing very well in in the camp, in the Dallas Mavericks camp, they're saying that he's really blowing everyone away with, with just how great he's been in training camp and in the practices. So I don't think it's any need to really worry about Klay Thompson. I'm sure it's just him just knocking the rust off and just getting back to the swing of things. But if this is something that does continue, something we definitely want to be on top of, but like I said, we have, we've got more than enough guys that we can throw in there. I mean, we are out without Dante Exum for like three months. We're going to be totally fine. If Klay Thompson needs to miss a few games or if he has to maybe go to the bench, cool. Najee Marshall slide right in. I think the Dallas Mavericks will be fine. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Do you think we should be worried about Klay Thompson's back? 
or is this something that hey it, it happens it's whatever let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below we can have a conversation about it but that's all i got for you guys today thank you for making this far to the video make sure to check out our twitter and discord links in the description below consider becoming a channel member we are doing another giveaway the winner will be announced next week on saturday we're doing a live stream make sure you're there but till next time y'all take care drink water peace